Imagine this. You're lying on your bed, scrolling through your phone, and you come across this model and think, wow, I would shower a model. All they do is wear clothes and take pictures all day. But what if I told you that modeling is not what it seems to be? See, at least at one point in your life, started becoming a model or an influencer. I mean, who hasn't? Honestly, who wouldn't want to take pictures looking fabulous? I sure did. Seeing all these beautiful models, dressing up, smiling, having the time of their lives, it sounds a lot better than most jobs. I mean, would you rather be scrubbing toilets or would you rather be taking a picture all day? That's what I always thought. Until I did some research and found out the truth about modeling. Today I'm here to convince you that modeling is a dangerous job. It can be very unhealthy, it has a toxic workplace, and a lot of sexual harassment allegations occur. Let's begin with how unhealthy modeling really is. Most of us know that most models are underweight. To be precise, 81% of the models possess a body mass index that's unhealthy. A body mass index is a way of figuring out if someone's healthy or unhealthy based on their height, which models would be classified as underweight. Female models have to be 5'8 and taller than long, preferable, and for males, it's between 5'11 to 6'2. A lot of models eat an apple a day to stay skinny, but they end up underweight, which is super bad for their height. Charlie Howard came out saying, he's a big F you to my ex-agency for saying that at a height of 5'8 and a size 6, that it was too big or too out of shape to be a part of the industry. Another model, Bria Murphy, came out saying that she was pressured into eating cotton balls. Yeah, you heard me, cotton balls. Apparently, eating cotton balls convinces your body into thinking that you're not hungry anymore, which causes you to starve yourself. You can't tell me this is physically or mentally healthy. Studies show that models are on a high risk of developing a psychological disorder. The Modeling Alliance came out saying that 68% of the models who did a survey have depression and anxiety. But not only that, but it has a very toxic workplace. Uh, models are constantly being told that their face and body is ugly, even though they're all unique and beautiful in their own ways. Being told that you're not good enough for this, for that, because you're too fat, you're too short, you're too skinny, you're too tall is not okay. Especially for things you can't control, like height, body structure, hair texture, or even skin color. Would you guys like it if a teacher kept telling you that you're dumb, they are stupid, and they will never succeed in anything in life? I don't think so. I hope most of us know the show America's Next Top Model. It was a very popular show in the 2000s. It was basically models competing against each other to see who the best model is at the end of the show. But not a lot of us know that show was actually pretty toxic. The people working were toxic, even the models were toxic. There was one photo shoot where the models were forced to go to a cold pool, which caused a girl to have hypothermia. They didn't do anything about it. There was also a lot of racist and homophobic comments coming out of the model's mouth. One specifically said, I hate gay people, I hate Muslims, and one even complained that there were too many black people competing in the industry. And one more thing, how do you judge someone's physical individuality when everyone's opinions differ? People view and appreciate beauty differently, so who are you to say if this person's too ugly to compete? Going to my third point, sexual harassment. Do you like being touched who you don't want to? Do you like getting inappropriate comments about your body? Do you like being manipulated into doing things you don't want to do? Well, modeling is a place for you when you're uncomfortable 24-7. Sarah Ziff, a 14-year-old model, very young for a model. She went to the photographer's house to take a picture, like most models do. It was all going well until he asked her to take her bra off. Remember, she's 14. She didn't want to do it at first, but she was eager to be liked, so she did it anyways. Another case where 15 men were molested by Bruce Weber where they were asked to take off their pants and got touched without their consent. 30% of the models came out saying that they were sexually assaulted or sexually harassed in some kind of way. And remember, that 30% isn't everybody. A lot of victims don't come out for various different reasons. It could be because they're too scared, they think it's their fault, or they think that no one's going to do anything about it. Just like how the Modeling Alliance didn't do anything about it. For example, there were two models, one named Marsha, one named Paula. They both got sexually harassed, so they went to their manager. The manager said that they were being crybaby and overreacting about the situation. And the saddest part of it all was that the models working with them, so basically their friends, were even saying not to say anything because they would be labeled as troublemakers, and no one wants to work with a troublemaker. So they would lose opportunities with good photographers, so they would basically lose their job. Do you want to be a model after hearing all of this? Modeling will be the death of you. Remember, what you think and see isn't always what they seem to be. I'm not telling you to become a model. You could be anything you want to be. 
I'm just warning, preparing you what life really is as a model. Thank you.